angels recount the wisdom of the saints and let the church proclaim their praise. Their names will live on and on. Good morning. So, no deacon today, but we do have a deacon candidate today. That's a good start. So, <clears throat> today we're remembering uh, the 85th birthday of Jackson Sh Scharf. So, we'll have a happy birthday for you. And we have the living intentions of baby Johanna Harris, Zaki Gwenakwa, Sam Banakwa, Banakud, and the pose of the souls of Arthur Torres, Cora Powers Christ, Bellin Renantira, Bonificio, Chimatura, and Gloria Gomez Cabernet, Cabin, Cabin Gone, or close to that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we first ask for God's forgiveness. I confess, Almighty oh, God, to you, my brothers and sisters, I have prayed not sin in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. My fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, pay for me all his and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give light to your church by the example and teachings of the bishops, Saints Basil and Gregory, grant, we pray, that in humility we may learn your truth and practice in faithful, faithfully in charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, <clears throat> who is the liar? Whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Whoever denies the Father and the Son, this is the Antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son does not have the Father, but whoever confesses the Son has the Father as well. Let what you heard from the beginning remain in you. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in, in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made us, eternal life. I write you these things about those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you receive from him remains in you so that you do not need anyone to teach you. But this but his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and not false, just as it taught you remain in him. And now children remain in him so that when he appears we may have confidence and not be put to shame by him at his coming. The word of the Lord. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen, have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. In times past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. This is the testimony of John when the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him and asked him, Who are you? He admitted, he did not, and he did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, <clears throat> I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, <clears throat> Who are you? So we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize? If you are not Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I, I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have a couple of very famous, very uh, wise men in today. today and a chance for us to remember them, Basil. And, um, so, you know, we're getting ready for th three wise men tomorrow. Today it's just two. And now we have one wise man, and that's going to be our deacon candidate. I just came across a timely quote. Our hope is not in the new year, but in the one who makes all things new. If you're still looking for New Year's resolutions, perhaps consider praying for the grace of desire to be more like Jesus, and then watch all the jigsaw puzzle parts of your life start perfectly coming together. How do we become like Jesus? Embrace his cross and follow him. Jesus is a healer and a teacher, and we're called to do the same in our lives by comforting the disturbed and disturbing the comfortable. Today we have great examples. We celebrate the lives of St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory Nazianzus, both bishops in the church. Both were born in the year 330 in Asia Minor, the modern area or the area of modern day Turkey. They met while in school 
Both were highly educated and were gifted preachers and teachers. They converted many into Christianity. Basil is a doctor of the church and earned the title great for also his holiness and great charity. He took the time to help the poor. He gave away his inheritance and started a soup kitchen. Earlier in his life, he also moved to the wilderness and started a monastery. Gregory was so good in preaching that he disturbed the comfortable to the point of almost being murdered by a young man who repented at the last minute and Gregory comforted the disturbed through gentle goodness and forgave the young man. Their timely message for us today is to become authentic witnesses of our faith. They did it by teaching and healing through works of mercy. The two saints who simply wanted others to see Christ in them reinforce another great witness of Jesus. In the gospel reading today, we are reminded that St. John the Baptist was given a critical task of preparing the way for the coming of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. He disturbed the comfortable by announcing the coming judgment and the need for repentance. He also comforted the disturbed, which led many to be baptized. John's witness is transcendent. It reminds us that we each need to experience in our heart that there is more to life than our existence in the material and secular world. It all started with the miraculous circumstances of his conception and birth. From his natural, supernatural beginning, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had an ascetic lifestyle. He wore camel's hair and ate locusts and wild honey in the desert. I've been in that part of the desert in the Holy Land, and I can attest how the desolate surroundings would have provided him solitude to hear the voice of God. By separating himself from the world, he gave testimony of another world. By detaching from the material and earthly distractions, he teaches that one may come closer to experiencing the presence of God in our life. John the Baptist attracted many followers, even to the extent that many wondered if he was the awaited savior. But he was not about himself, and he always pointed to the real Messiah. As an authentic witness, he lived his message of humility and simplicity. Because his beliefs and actions were consistent, he gained credibility, which in turn helped him be an effective witness when he preached the truth. Just like today, people were also hungry for the truth back in his time. They were tired of the restrictions imposed by their repressive leaders. Throughout our human history, we yearn to break the chains of slavery to sin and worldly desires. John helped many receive the grace to see that perspective. They began to turn their lives around through repentance, and they were renewed with hope and peace through baptism. John's ultimate witness came through his martyrdom and standing up for the truth in the sanctity of marriage. As one of the first disciples of Jesus, he knew that he had to persevere witnessing the truth to glorify God, even if it costs his life. As we reflect on his witness, I think about the tremendous fortitude he had to resist the temptations to elevate himself as he built the following. I also think about his perseverance as he carried on avoiding the easier path when he was being persecuted for comforting the disturbed and disturbing the comfortable. What must have been running through John's mind when he was facing death? He surely must have been trembling, but he was given unbelievable strength and courage. How awesome is the power of God's grace that helped him persevere. As we enter this year, new year, what resolution is God asking us to make to be a witness of our faith? What graces do we need to persevere while pursuing these resolutions? The good news is that the graces offered to the saints are here for us. May we hear God's call and may we ask today for the graces needed to move forward as the saints did, preparing the way for the Lord, disturbing the comfortable, comforting the disturbed, and as St. Peter also instructs us to always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence.
come, <coughs> come, <coughs> we come with our needs before God, our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father. We pray for our bishops and all who lead us in following Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick, that they may have healing grace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the deceased, that they may have eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the special intentions we have for today. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we silently add our own intentions. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, we've come with our needs. Hear us all through Christ our Lord. It's just down to you and me. Yeah. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory in honor of Saints Basil and Gregory a means of eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You are glorified in your saints, for your glory is the crowning of your gifts. In their lives on earth, you give us an example. In our communion with them, you give us their friendship, and in their prayer for the church, you give us strength and protection. This great company of witnesses spurs us on to victory, to share the prize of everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. With angels and archangels with, and the whole company of saints, we proclaim the unending hymn of praise, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his pa passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. By him and death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The communion antiphon. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God.
Let us pray. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray. Oops. May partaking of these heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high so that we may celebrate the feast days of St. Basil and Gregory, and we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. The Mass is ended. We may go in peace. St. Michael, Archangel, So we have a uh, birthday to celebrate for Jackson or J Jack. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Happy birthday to you. A prayer of strength and protection for priests and religious. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Of the Father and the Son.